Welcome to Microcontrol Systems Online Training Video Systems. The current presentation will discuss the MCS Magnum keypad display. The keypad display connection is a six wire shielded cable approximately 10 feet in length. It consists of three twisted pairs. It is preferable that you do not cut this cable but leave it in its entire length. Coil up any excess cable and tie wrap it in an area where it will not be readily accessible to AC noise. The keypad consists of three function keys, four direction keys, and two selection keys, which are menu and enter. The display is a 128 by 64 dot pixel graphics LCD, which is backlit. It is 2.8 inches in diagonal viewing area and it has white characters on a dark background which is reversible from the keypad. This is the graphics display portion of the keypad display. The three function keys, the four direction keys, the menu and enter key as well as an RS-232 communications port so that you may communicate directly from your PC or laptop. The Magnum has three different versions of keypad display mounting. This particular one is called the panel mount and it is used where you are in an outside environment and it is installed in a rainproof enclosure. This is a face plate mount or a door mount and it is used in indoor locations where you will cut an opening into the door and mount this faceplate. This is an original equipment manufacturing mounting package where the manufacturer will make his own mounting brackets. All of these are UL listed. The next slides we're going to demonstrate how to navigate through the MCS Magnum keypad display. If at all possible, please set up a Magnum keypad display demo unit and follow along with this presentation. If you press the menu key, you will get the main menu. On it are listed the items which you may select. The first is status or set points. The next are outputs, service tools, inputs, lockout reset, alarms, and al lockout alarms. Lockout alarms are a subset of the alarms in which you are going to scan through the alarm items and only display those that cause lockouts. There is a graphics capability and you have passwords where you may get authorized. There is a help and a large function which is function 1 and function 3. If you will press F1 for help the following display will appear. It will tell you it is the help key. It will give you the current time in the Magnum microprocessor. The up, down, left, right arrows move the cursor. Then you have the enter or select. The program keys, which are function 1, 2, and 3, which are changing depending on the display that is currently up. The menu key, which will provide you with the main menu. And 1 to 8, which are the numbers on the lower left hand side of the keys. You will notice that the numbers 0 and 9 do not appear. If you have an authorization code with a 0 and 9 it is not accessible from the main keypad. If you will now go back and press the menu key and then select large which is function 3 you will get the following display. It will tell you the current time and it will tell you that the control is on the output which is currently at 46 degrees Fahrenheit and the input is 55. It will also give you the refrigerant type that is being used. 
If you will now go back and select the menu button again, we will be prompted with the main menu. Status is already highlighted, so if we will press the Enter key, we will get the first portion of the status screen. The first part refers to the overall unit, and then we will deal with individual circuits. So this tells us the unit. It also tells us that it is 46 degrees leaving liquid and 55 degrees entering liquid. It tells us the unit's loaded, how long it's been loaded, and that we're in cooling mode. It tells you how many steps are wanted on, how many are actually on, what the wanted percentage is, what the delay is for the next available capacity change, and it also provides the slope of the line of the controlling sensor. If you will now press the page down key, which is function 3, you will get the next screen for the unit status. It will give us the amps and the volts. It will give us kW and tons, and it will give us kW per ton. If you will again select the page down key, function 3, the next screen will give you the status of the first circuit. So this is now compressor 1. It is switched off, and if you remember in the previous screens, we wanted two steps on but only had one. That's because this circuit is switched off. It will give you the saturated suction temp, suction superheat, saturated condensing temp, and discharge superheat. If you will again select function 3 to page down, we will get the next screen for this circuit. It will tell you the liquid line solenoid number one is closed and how long it's been closed for. It will give you the current pressure, the saturated suction temperature for that pressure. It will give you the temperature and the suction superheat. If you will hit the page down key function three again, the next screen will be for circuit two. The same information. This circuit is running. It has been running for 17 hours, 28 minutes, and 24 seconds. It will give you the suction, pressure, temperature, discharge pressure, temperature, oil pressure, differential, and temperature, and the motor percentage, and the motor temperature. If you select function 3 again, we will get the next screen for this circuit, which provides the saturated suction temp, the suction superheat, saturated condensing temperature, and discharge superheat. One thing that you should know is that the discharge superheat and the saturated condensing temperature need to get above 117 degrees Fahrenheit and around 25 degrees for the superheat in order to get good oil separation. The next line tells you what the demand is that is wanted for this step and the current ratio of pressures for this step. This is information provided for turbo cores in order to understand when you are getting ready to start the next step where you are in the ratios. If you will press the menu key and then move with the cursor to outputs and hit the enter key, you will get the following screen. You will have the screen label telling you it is the outputs you will get a left-right arrow that tells you that these functions are now available. So we can essentially move this window left or right and up or down, depending on where we want to look at it to see what data. The first 
columns tell you that it's M1 through M4, which is the Magnum outputs 1 through 4. It will give you the name of the relay. This is condensing fan 1-1, etc. The next column will tell you the status, whether it is off, on, manual on, manual off, etc. If you will now press the right arrow, this will move us to the right, moving the window. And we will get a screen that now provides the same information on the left, but gives us less time on as the next item. If we will hit the right arrow again, we will move over to last time off. If we press the right arrow again, we will move over to the runtime today. If we will press the right arrow again, we will move over to cycles today. Pressing the right arrow again moves us to runtime yesterday. Pressing the right arrow again moves us to cycles yesterday. Using the right arrow again moves us to total run hours and using the right arrow again moves us to total cycles. So all of the information is essentially available here that you can see on your PC or laptop. You just have to move the screen around in order to see it all. If you will press F1 for analog outputs, we will now go look at those. Okay, this time it, you're still under outputs, but this time it is analog out. So it is M1 through M4. And as you can see, it is two electronic expansion valves. Three and four are currently not being used, and the status is that nothing is open at this point. If you will press the menu key and then move the arrow to inputs and hit the enter key, you will be prompted with the inputs. Okay, the first column again is on the master. The next column is the name of the inputs. The next column are the values. And the last column tells you that these values are in manual. I'm sitting on a demo unit, which is not wired to anything. Therefore, I put the values in manual so that we could see the um, information on the screen. Now, if you will press the menu key, move your selection to alarms and hit the enter key. You will be prompted with the alarm screen. There are two alarms per window that is provided. This one tells us that a sensor input was put in manual M6 on October the 10th at 160758. The next one gives you the next alarm, and as you page down, you will continue to get the alarms. If you will now press the menu key and select the graph function, this tells you that we're graphing chiller in. It is basically a straight line at 55 degrees. Okay, if you will now press the edit key for function one, we will get the information on the scaling of the graph. And the sample rate is currently set at one second. You may change this sample rate while you were here, or you may just go on to another screen. This screen is the set points, and it will give you the first set point, which is the chilled water out, the control zone for that, plus the control zone minus, and then it jumps to set point 58, which says the config test is equal to zero. Now this is true on my machine because I'm not hooked up to anything, therefore I would get alarms on communications if I did not tell it to ignore that.
You'll also notice that after item 3, it didn't display any other set points. There are many more set points available, but they are tied to authorization codes. So whether you are service, supervisor, factory, or administration as to whether you get to see those set points or not. Now if you will select the menu key and then move to service tools and hit enter, you will be prompted with the service tools screen. The first item is the network address. You may have all network addresses at one if you choose, but if you wire the units together for communications, then each unit must have its own individual network address. The next item is the Ethernet network, then system information, time and date, display, which allows you to alter the contrast or reverse the color, if you will press F3 for page down, then you will be prompted with the next group of service tool items. Clear alarms, clear points, sensor diagnostics, configurator checksums, and operating schedules. If you will now press F3 again for page down, we will be prompted with holiday dates, BACnet device ID, and then again back to the beginning, which is the RS-485 network address. Now, if we will hit the enter key here, we will get the network address change screen. It will tell us that the protocol is MCS, the address is 1, and the baud rate is 19,200 bits per second. And we may, if we're authorized, we may change these items in this screen. If you will now select the Ethernet network and press the Enter key, you will be prompted with the Ethernet setup. It says, do I have a dynamic IP? No. And then it gives us what the IP address is. If you will hit F3 for page down, you will then get the subnet mask and the default gateway. Okay, if you will hit the page down key again, it will then give us the port information and we're back to the dynamic IP. And we can make a change from here if we would like to do that. Okay, if you get to service tools, and then go to system information. We will be prompted with the firmware version, which in this case is 09.00H, and the configuration name. If you will now select the menu and select lockout resets and hit enter, you will be prompted with the lockout reset function. If there are no lockouts, you will be told that there are no lockouts. If there is a lockout and you would like to reset it, it says, would you like to do that, yes or no? It's on the yes thing. If you hit enter, you will automatically reset the lockout. Okay, if you will now select the menu key and select lockout alarm. This is now going to be a subset of the alarms. The alarm here was item number 34. It was unsafe suction, and it was on circuit number 2. It occurred on October the 10th, and you can use the page up, page down, or previous next, and the left-right arrows to get additional information. This info part of the lockout alarm screen is telling you all of the details for the last 30 seconds prior to the lockout. If you will now hit the menu key and select password and hit enter, you will be prompted with the password screen. The PIN number is a four character number that you can enter from the keypad. You will find the numbers on the lower left hand corners of the keys. 
Okay, concerning passwords and lockouts, you are automatically logged out if no key is pressed for 15 minutes. You may log off by putting in any invalid code in the password. You are limited to how many lockout resets you can do in one day, usually six, then a factory reset is required. If you have any questions, please call MCS at 239-694-0089.